you may have noticed, or you will notice now, as I show the agenda again, interspersed throughout the presentations today, we're going to have a number of ticks, tips and tricks. Um, folks from the staff here at Blue Marble, again, appropriately distance in their own offices and some, some at home, uh, are going to be sharing a little bit of information. And the first one of those is actually now. Um, you may have uh, joined us a few weeks ago for our introduction to Global Mapper 21.1 presentation. Uh, myself and my colleague Katrina Schweikert were able to share a little bit about that. We're going to condense that for our first tip and trick. Those of you who have not seen the latest version of Global Mapper, I'm going to hand the uh, screen over here to Kat and she's going to walk you through uh, some of the latest functionality that has been added to the uh, to Google Mapper. Uh, good morning, Kat. Are you with us? Good morning, David. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so as you said, I'm going to kind of condense some of the muted we did in our 21.1 um, What's New, which you can access on our YouTube channel or on our website. Um, and so you should see my workspace right now. I've got some vector data loaded here that is um, 3D vectors. Um, and the first functionality that I want to cover um, involves shifting data um, by height, so adding a 3D shift to data. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open the 3D view here so we can really see the effect of this. Um, so these features are uh, given a height already and they have been extruded down to the ground. Um, and that is a per vertex height. Um, so that's what's going to allow this functionality to work. So you can shift data horizontally. Um, you know, in various previous versions of the application, I've just selected my digitizer tool here. And I'm actually going to do this in 3D just for, you know, a little bit of interesting more interesting um, visualization here. Um, so if I just select one of these features here and right click to the digitizer menu, um, under the move reshape sub menu here, I'll see this shift offset area feature option. Um, and what we newly added in 21.1 is this ability to shift it by a Z offset in addition to the X and Y offset. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to do pretty drastic here just to make sure that we can actually see that change. So I'm taking this kind of, um, I think this is actually a garage building here, and we're going to just add a bunch of stories to it um, just so we can really see that effect there. Um, and if I deselect my area feature there, you can now see that that feature has actually shifted up um, 100 feet, so greatly changed the height of that feature. You can also do that at the layer level. So if I wanted to take all of my building features here, I can do the same shift option here by right clicking in the control center. And with the shift to fixed distance option, you'll get that same set here. And you can see where I've done this in the past already. So it's remembered my last setting, but let's say I wanted to shift all of these features. Maybe it's not properly aligning with my elevation data or I don't know, some other use case here. Um, I can go ahead and shift all of those features all at once. Or in this case, let's go back and put them back where they were. So I'm going to go back and reshift them here. Just make that go back to negative 30 here. Go back to where they were. So that's one of the new features of 21.1. Um, we're going to look at another example here in this workspace. So another exciting new tool that we've added um, is raster reclassification. Um, so we got, we've gotten a lot of requests in the past around, um, you know, working with palettes of images and, you know, how do I change those values? Um, so we've started working on raster reclassification. Um, this is a really powerful analysis. Um, you'll see it kind of grow in future versions. Um, but we've started working originally with palette images. So the example that I have here, um, let's take a look at some land cover data. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I have some national land cover data set data here for this is Portland, Maine. Um, so in this particular case, you know, the land cover has a number of classes, but I might be doing an analysis where I only care about a certain area or set of areas, or maybe I want to simplify my data. Um, so I'm going to go into the analysis tool here and go to raster reclassification. And I can go ahead and load the palette from the layer that already exists. Um, and I can actually drag values from this palette over to my output here um, to create new rules. Um, in this case, I might be interested only in, let's say we only care about the open space here. Um, maybe I'm doing some open space analysis for the city of Portland. 
Um, so I'm going to choose that as an output. You know, you can also combine multiple values and then you can also man manually update what that output pixel value is. So maybe in this case, I just want to simplify my data and make that a smaller number here. I'm going to add another row here as well, just by right clicking. And in this case, I want to say um, all the other values. I'm going to use the keyword else here. I'm going to make those just be uh, no data values. And you can find all those rules um, in the documentation for this tool using the help button here. Um, and I can validate, make sure that that is correct here. If I go ahead and generate that, um, what I should get here is a new layer where you know, only that open space data is included. So this is a way where I could you know, recombine or kind of merge different data sets together. Um, and actually, I think since we have a minute here, I might show a more detailed example of that. Um, we do have a lot of customers asking about um, you know, working with LiDAR data and kind of bringing it into software that might be a little more traditional, might be used to things like land cover or clutter grids. So I'm gonna show you a different example of this as well. Um, so let's turn off land cover here. I'm gonna turn on some LiDAR data up in this area. So this data has been classified. Um, and right now this is a point cloud, but um, obviously this tool is a raster tool. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually um, create an elevation grid out of this data. But what I really want is not elevation. Um, what I wanna do is take these pixel values. So I want the classification codes. So I'm basically gonna turn my 3D LiDAR data into a raster that is similar to land cover that is representing those classification codes. Um, so this might be for you know, bringing this LiDAR type really detailed you know, sub meter precision land cover type data into other GIS software, um, you know, or just using it for analysis where we wanna look at certain areas. Um, so my starting point here is to be is going to be to create that grid of those classification codes. And I can pick an output spacing here. We'll just increasing our, our spacing a little bit here just to cover our full extent here. So now I've turned this into a raster. Um, this is probably a little bit larger of pixels than I needed, but you get the idea here. Now if I go back into that analysis tool here in raster reclassification, So you'll see my LiDAR uh, classification codes as my palette of my input here. And now on the output side, um, you know, for example, I might wanna match that or you know, try to make some comparison between that and the national land cover data set. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and load that palette on the right side. And so there's obviously some judgment calls here, but you know, I might make a decision that I'm going to say that building class here um, it's going to be, you know, medium density or low density space. So I'm going to fill that in here. And I might make another decision that my tree points, um, my high vegetation is going to be this mixed forest class. Just dragging those values in. And let's also do something with the ground classification here. Got a lot of ground. This is probably, in this case, it's maybe uh, developed open space. This is mostly an urban area here. So there's obviously some judgment call in doing this transition, but we can kind of translate data from one classification scheme to another, or do things like simplify it or combine it, you know, or only take a look at certain outputs. And let's name our output layer here just to give it a, a better, so let's say this is LiDAR to land cover, just to give this layer a little more meaningful of a name here. And we'll go ahead and produce that. So now we've translated that data and I could have also changed the pixel colors, but um, at least the pixel values here should match the national land cover data set um, data there. And so that's a really powerful use of that tool. Um, so there's lots of other features that are included in 21.1. Um, a little bit later, I'll have a chance to cover more on the LiDAR side. Um, but another one I'll mention here, just unmuted option. Um, a lot of customers have asked about moving settings between machines, um, and particularly at this time when I know a lot of people are kind of switching computers or what they're doing. Um, we did recently in 21.1 add these options to export user settings. So saving things like your custom styles, um, you know, other customizations that you've added, custom online sources. Um, if your monitor is the same resolution on your new machine, you can also save your toolbar customizations and those will carry over. Um, so this is a new option that's gonna save all of those to a file. 
Um, and then you can use that same help menu import option to import them on a different machine. Um, so that's a really, really nice new, very timely tool here that was also added in 21.1 um, to kind of take all that customization that you've done on one computer and carry that over to another machine, whether you're deploying it, um, you know, across an enterprise or you're just moving, you know, kind of transitioning to working on a laptop when you used to work on a desktop or something like that. Um, that is a, a really helpful new feature. Um, so I think we're going to move back. So David, I'll give you back control here. Sure, thank you. Just a, a couple of questions came in, Kat. I'm going to ask one because this is one that we get a lot. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Somebody's asking about uh, if they currently have 21.0, what's involved in the upgrade or how, how does that process work? Do you want to share anything about our licensing? Maybe it'd be a good idea at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we did uh, about a year or two ago move to a maintenance and support model. So as long as you have purchased a license within the last year, um, you should be eligible for the latest updates, including this 21.1 release. Um, so it's it's basically based on the date of your purchase. Um, so 21.0 users should be eligible for 21.1. Um, you may need to request a new license file. Um, so either using um, your order number, if you're on a single user license and you're online, um, you can do that. Or, um, you know, the normal contacting our um, technical support team or our um, sales support team if you're on a network license or, you know, other, other types of licenses. Okay, so does so, that answer the question? Yeah, sure. I think that, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will assume there's a thumbs up coming here. So perfect. Excellent.